see kind of the dynamic shifting from Lucian being the first pick to Twitch being the first pick yeah. almost all of the time. It was the big deal at All-Stars. And the interesting thing is, I was talking to um, Krepo about it, actually. And he was like, yeah, like Twitch is a very specific champion. You actually have to learn Twitch more than just like, I'm an AD carry player. I'll just play this guy instead. If you're bad at Twitch, you're a liability. Mm -hmm. You've actually got to play Twitch properly, like get those picks, get the stealth ganks and whatnot. So if you're going to learn the champion properly, it's not worth going for it yet. It's a different dynamic, and he brings a new dimension to the game. Because mm -hmm. not only is he an AD carry, he's also an assassin. Yeah. When you get to that point where you have one or two kills on you, or one or two kills over your lane opponent, yeah. you are a huge threat to them. Play the Red King. I mean, even sort of the Divine show up on top of somebody and sure. just pop them. Yeah. So Twitch has that whole new dimension to him, aside from just being a backliner. He can be like, I'm right next yeah. to you. Well, we'll see if he shows up in this one. But speaking of assassins, Aurelia and Cossix both got locked in for Shantel Maxwell. And you were telling me earlier, Aurelia is his favorite top laner there. So they've got uh, power picks and comfort picks here in the, in the top and jungle lanes. Yeah, so Kha'Zix is extremely powerful. That also takes away from Spellfang, who played that in the round of 20. So that's doubly effective there. And Vanez, yes, like you said, Aurelia is his favorite champion. He's been playing that since Season 2. And Vanez has been playing for about four years now, almost five. He's basically been playing since release, since he was very young, I think 14. Mm -hmm. He's been honing his skills, and now he's in the challenger scene. So he's definitely made his way up that ladder. Yeah, a lot of experience out there. We're going to see if he can keep his way in. Move on to the round of eight. Over on the left-hand side, No Mercy picked up Pantheon Jungle for this one. And Lulu, which could be mid or support. And this is, uh, once again, before we added the little delay on Pantheon's ultimate, which I just learned today, yeah. it's actually a change that we implemented yeah. where when you ultimate, you cannot cast spells falling land. from it. Exactly. Which is a very healthy change. It's kind of like, I'm, I'm out of the circle. As an AD carry player, I'm happy about it. Yeah, you're very happy about it because it's like, I'm almost out of the circle and you get out of it, but it's like he's coming down at you and he's already hit you with an Aegis of Zeonia. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, that's not fun. Yeah. But now he basically has to go all the way down. But that, we're not going to see that here. Like 4.6. So the Lulu pick up here, it could be a mid lane Lulu. It is somewhere in Meister's champion pool. Mm -hmm. But it could be that support, which yeah. would basically leave Sazed with Leona, forcing him onto that, or Blitzcrank. Or somebody doesn't play very much of. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Well, so Leona gets picked up here for Sazed. The Jinx in there as well. So an aggressive bot lane's available. Honestly, Chantal's team is entirely aggro. Yeah. Like, it, they have the go in button, and that's it. But the thing is, if they're all going in, you get to be standing where you were, and you're already the back line. That's true. It's just like, they engaged for me. I don't have to peel backwards. And Chantal played Jinx in the round of 20. He went 10, 2, and 5 on that for 7.5 KDA. But they also fed all of the kills into him. He had half the kills of his team. So he had the 75% kill participation, but 10 of the kills out of the 20 were directly onto him and into yep. his pocket. So they funnel a lot of gold into him while they split push with Vanes. And if Vanes can win his lane in the top lane by himself, you know, that's going to be a huge boon for the team. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how that one-on-one -on -one goes there, Shivana versus Aurelia. It is, as we talked about, right? Soraka is going through the mid. Lulu support is going to be there up against Leona. They're happy to play that matchup. They could have gone somewhere else with it, but with Leona being grabbed. Oriana does get locked in for Avenue, so second time for him as well. And he's just going to be there to supplement all the engage. Put the ball onto Aurelia, Leona, or Kha'Zix, and more people get knocked up. It's a very utility-heavy team here for No Mercy. Yeah. But at the same time, because SMW had the uh, or last pick, they were able to pick the Oriana, which is, we've talked about it before, one of the counters to Soraka. She yeah. can't really hold a candle to that in lane. She can do pretty decently. But these are yeah. both champions that they both played during the round of 20. And the performance that Meister had on Soraka was a 2, 3, and 8. Yeah. Basically just being a utility for his team. And now we see the Oriana who does really well against that. Right. The same Oriana that Avenue had so much CS with and high kill participation. Yeah, I gotta say, it's one that I, I expect to go in the favor of Oriana, but it's something that um, all the players talk about when they're fighting against Faker in the mid lane All-Star, was that he would he would crush you in winning matchups, and then in ones he's supposed to lose, he would find a way to squeak his way through it anyway. And it's like, if you outskill your opponent, you can go to a bad matchup and play it out. Now, again, we talked about, it's probably not the likely situation here. Uh, Avenue's an amazingly good player, but it's something to watch for. Is like Even though we talk about these counter picks and the, the fact that a lane should go well, you can always outplay your opponent. Yeah, and I was actually talking with uh, Complexity, formerly Just complexity, complexity. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say Complexity Black, but then I was like Complexity, former Complexity Black, and they were saying that probably in scrims he'll actually pick some losing matchups mm -hmm. to practice it. Good he's choice. Like, he's like, if we're blue side, sometimes I will get stuck with this matchup. I need to practice it. We won't always be able to, you know, go ahead and go into a matchup and know what we're facing. Absolutely. So. Sometimes you just have to do that. And Faker, he does that in competitive play, too. He's like, I will play this matchup because, you know what? 
I have to learn it. I have to learn it. Yeah, and it's something that's actually really interesting about teams that scrim and whatnot is I asked a lot of the LCS teams back when, a couple months ago when Cassidy was perma-banned the first time around, um, and it was like, you know, I'm, I'm surprised like none of you are like letting it go through to counterpick it because I feel like it's doable, and most teams are telling me that Cassidy just would win games by himself, and then the first few times we saw Cassidy picked an NA, people beat him. They would find a way to beat the comp anyway, so... Uh, yeah, people learning the matchups, learning how to play against the popular champions or play as them in their own bad matchups. Something that's very much worth doing. So, getting ourselves into the game now. No Mercy on blue. Chantal Machtwau in the red. And they're both pretty hiding towards the top side of the jungle. It's like a mix of Japanese and or Chinese and German. Yeah. Mandarin and German. Macht is make. Chantal, uh, both a Buddhist. philosopher or poet. Buddhist yeah. poet? Yeah. I think. Uh, also the name of the AD carry. So he yeah. makes, and I don't know he what makes wow. Wow. He makes wow. He makes wow. Spelt W-A-U. Why not? Gonna make it happen here in this one. If someone's gonna tweet me and be like, you guys are dumb, it's we, obviously this reference. Well, it's gotta be something. It's gotta be a reference to something. Yeah. That or they just jumbled up three names. You know, nobody, nobody does that, you know. <laughs> Nasus is Explorers. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just name yeah. different tiers. This is always the thing with casting um, Challenger for the first time is we're going to get some of the names wrong, and I apologize if we put yeah. your names, guys. Um, tweet us. Tell us the actual pronunciation. If you are the player or yeah. you know exactly how to say it, yeah. please. Shout out to Sinan Odwamna, who's like had multiple Twitter conversations with me now about how to say his name, and I'm apparently the oh. best of the Western casters at getting it right. So they're all going to go in here. It's 4v5, though. Soraka is not there. Oh, man. Completely planned. Spellfang oh. goes down. One for zero. There's the Glitterlance. Sakutska also dying. Two for zero. SMW knows that invade. They saw it before. They waited for it. Since these are the 90-second turrets, or 90 second trinkets, you cannot ward that early. So they decided to go with the invade. It was a little bit of a delayed invade, but they yep. didn't even start the red. SMW played that perfectly, and that is two kills just falling into their hands with assists across the board on everybody. That's going to upset all of these lanes in their favor just immensely. Yeah, that's that's a research level one if I've ever seen one. Oh, that is yeah. knowing that evade's coming through. So. Going to get ourselves back into the lanes. It is going to be two on two and one on one, by the way. So uh, both teams want to put their dual lanes to the top side. The teleport coming in for both uh, Vanas and Sakutka. Get themselves the start of their lane. It looked like No Mercy was hoping that they'd put the two in the bottom lane mm -hmm. just so that Jinx and Leona would be there. And then if you invaded, you would have the numbers advantage. But Meister was already mid, and it wouldn't have made a difference, actually, because the, how quickly Spellfang got destroyed. Oh, yeah. That was incredibly quick. That was remarkable. Immediate. So we're gonna I've never seen somebody match. blow up that quickly in a level one. Yeah, me either. That was, that was ludicrously great. So, two kill lead early on, of course, um, being that it is the 2014 season, it's not... Uh, it's 280 gold for the first one, 180 for the second. So, it's not a gigantic gold swing, but it doesn't matter. 900 gold lead right now for SMW. I do want to see how this matchup goes, though. Vanna's hitting level three first, getting some damage down. Look at that. Half HP on this poor Shivana, and Gonna be forced to chuck potions. You can see 16 to 7 already. This is a great lead for the red team. And the fact that they picked up all those kills, that early experience spread across them gives them a lane advantage in every lane. At this point, no mercy. They have to look for Spellfang to get to that level 6 and start causing ganks in these lanes because them winning them by themselves is virtually impossible at this point. It's going to be real difficult. Like uh, Up top, though, that might be something that tilts in their favor because Lucian has doubled the CS. He's got her underneath the turret. Yeah. But it's Leona. Leona can always swap and engage on, but Lulu would have to peel back. So there's a lot of just what could possibly happen in this top lane, and this is going to be one of the hinges. And we're going to see. There's the engage right there and Tracks the trap. The shielded, takes the traps to the face as well. Done a half HP, but gets damage back down to Chantal. But look at this. Leona still chasing down. 150 health left onto Lulu. And to consider, uh, continue your point about, uh, yeah, the leads, yeah, the XP's are a very real one, though most of these lanes didn't get to recall yet. So the money is just sitting there in their yeah. pockets unused. They have to take advantage of this early laning phase. And a lot of people don't back until about level 6, especially in the top lane, unless yeah. you get poked out really hard or there's jungle pressure. AD carols typically choose to back when they have a BF sword. Yeah. BF sword and a couple of potions to make sure they don't get pushed out right after. But... Uh, that is going to be generally first for Shantalico, but the fact that there's a 7 CS lead means the gold is actually 
I think actually in the favor of No Mercy's bottom lane right here, which would give them the first recall. Spell thing, though, coming up. Walk it through a ward. Oh, the engage made. comes in right at the wrong time, though, and says, nice flash over the traps right there. Says, not a good spot there. Does still have the summoners up if he needs them. Gets exhausted as well. Good damage comes through. When's he going to leave? There he goes. Heal is still available on Jinx. Going to get away. Spellfang decides not to continue chasing. They had no vision on Kha'Zix, but in the mid lane, Meister's forced to blow his own heal. Wow, so summoner spells burned on both sides there. The ball hits again an Avenue. 33 to 38 in minions, but forces the first recall. So this is, once again, 4.6, so the Grievous Wounds is still removed. Mm -hmm. This is the patch where you can't stack heals on top of each other. Correct. So they, Well, you can, they're just half as effective. Yes. But now we see Vanez is actually going to lose a little bit of pressure in this lane unless he applies it again with that little bit of mana he has. Because he has the potion ticking. Well, we'll see. This sustain's going to be petering out. Both guys do have teleport back available and they're on the crux side of the map for a dragon anyway, so burning that TP doesn't exactly hurt them. And you can see Sekutka mm -hmm. has been putting points into his flame breath so he can farm safely. Yeah, you can't get into an auto attack trade. No, Aurelia will just beat you flat right. And the fact that he has that experience that he's always going to hit that next level just a little bit sooner. So the recall comes through, and Shivana does want some life steal to hold on to this lane a little bit more. So Vamp after a couple more potions as well. We're going to see when the recall comes through for Aurelia. Satane, he knows there's no wards in the river. So good, good to face check on this one. There's the W slow. Going to get stunned up as well by Vana's big damage comes through, forcing the flash. Going to let him get away, but he's at half health now. Raxo very low as well. This bottom lane, they were down in CS, but it looks like SMW, they're finding ways to get damage in. Yeah, the duo lane is definitely applying pressure now in the reverse order. Jinx is now coming to that point where she has the range. She's able to trade with Lucian from afar. And it looked like Sazed, you know, the synergy that they have in that bottom lane, Chantal, you know, aptly named after the team. Yeah. He's definitely got his matchups down. He knows play safe. It's okay. I'll give up some CS, but I'll get it back later. Yeah, playing a really, really good match overall. Vanez pushed under the turret, holds on to a 19 CS lead. And he's going to recall back, pick up maybe a Phage or so. We'll see what he can afford in this one. Sheen, all right. More burst damage that one. I guess it's actually, I think that's actually the more normal first item by an Aureli. I don't know my Aureli builds that well. Well, he was having mana problems too. You can see how much he was harassing. Yeah. So he wants to go ahead and add a little bit more. He picks up some potions for himself so he can continue to harass against the resourceless other top laner. Sure. I guess he's the bottom laner now. The solo lane. The solo lane. That's not in Mezikutka. Yep. So the Shivana. I mean, granted all the funny names to us, they actually sound pretty cool when you get them down. Yeah, it's true. Like, Sekutka. You're like, oh, that sounds so I awesome. I I had that one in the first place. Yeah. I didn't feel so bad about that one. Watch it turn out to be like, no, it's something else. Yeah, it's like completely backwards. It's actually spelled like in reverse, and we're just like completely stupid. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So I just figured, tried to figure out what it was backwards. <laughs> it's not. It's nothing, right? There, there's this one player whose name backwards is something. Katarina. Katarina, yeah, yeah. Near attack. Yeah, near attack. Exactly. Uh, yep. I was like, oh, it could have been one of those. It wasn't. You got to check him. Zenov, the Aurelia player. Meister's pretty straightforward. That one I got. Avenue also not not too hard in this one. So uh, back to the duel lane though we go. We'll talk about the uh, yeah. the builds here. These guys both got to recall pretty safely. CS pretty equal, but both on BF swords, uh, as well as the supports holding pretty equal builds as well. Tier 1 GP10 into half a sight stone. So these guys, honestly, they've held equal. Uh, the gold lead though I got to point out is actually growing in Shantao's favor. Started with a 900 gold lead, now 1500. So the laning phase excelling for the red team. That's mostly due to that gank down bottom and the fact that Vanus is already having a little bit of an advantage there. Yeah. And now Satane, he's going to invade here, look for a red buff on himself. But he's already got his own and Pantheon. Spellfang has his. So level six will be coming out here for both junglers. And now Satane, he's in a great position to go ahead and flank. But he's not going to go for it. Looks like he's going to go back. Amazing. So, I mean, Shivana does have her ulti available, but this is the kind of situation where you well, he can't knows she force that flash. It. Yeah, to me, it's it's kind of worth burning the cooldown. I mean, it does show the fact that you're not um, anywhere else but bottom lane, so it allows, like, kind of free ganks from Pantheon. And, yeah, it looks like he kind of, like, prefer to stay off the map for now. Yeah, so they were getting pink ward control for SMW on that yeah. top lane side. They have one by the red buff. They had one in that tri-bush. And then they went ahead and... No Mercy said, we're going to go clear this out. If they try to get us, then Spellfang can go ahead and leap in. But now, Spellfang coming straight up the lane. There is a ward in that second bush, though. Well, we'll see. Will he go any farther forward in this one? The ward's got about 20 seconds left till it disappears. Braxa puts the pink ward down to make sure. He stepped out of the brush. Spellfang stepped out, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, the jig is up. He's yep. caught. 
Gonna recall his way back. Oh, if he goes back, though, Satane is up in the top lane. Now, Satane's actually very fond of going to a lane, sitting there for a couple seconds, and then just starting his back. And he's like, if anything happens, I'll be here, but I'm really going backwards. Yeah. It looks like neither jungler finding any real ganks just yet, but it is worth pointing out. Elder Lizard already done. Nice little check there by Jinx. Tries to make sure Panthen has gone back. He has. Spellfang looks for the bottom lane, though. No one's around to stop oh, the one. Oh, going and to jump. And the fight's already started. Vanus has already gone in for the battle. Low health right there. Has to dash back to a minion. Trying to escape now near the tri brush. He did kill the minion, so he has the blade surge reset. It's a good stun. He has flash, though. Is the burst enough? It is not. Vanus gets over the wall. Good escape. That was a flash by Spellfang. Mm -hmm. But, of course, Dragon Scent was already used to try and push Vanus back into the Grand Skyfall. Very well played escape right there. Trades flash for flash. Ulti for ulti, otherwise pretty much safe in this one. So so that was a necessary gank there. Because he at least, even though he didn't kill him, he got the flash, which means that Sakuchka now has flash advantage in the lane. And a repeat gank would be much more effective at this point. He needs to revisit that lane and start getting it back in their favor. Because that's where most of the CS discrepancy is, is in that bottom lane or the solo top lane. So... Look at that, 26 between them. That's where it's really coming from. That's the big chunk of it. And if they can get that back, and also if they get a gank on him, that frees up a dragon for them. True. That would get them right back in this game and basically negate those two kills. See if they can find it right there. Cortosan took a bit of poke. Uh, shield did not quite come through in time. Spellfang looking to maybe repeat this gank in the bottom lane. No one is around to stop him. Satane's on the wrong side of the map. Vonis puts a ward down to try to spot some of these moves. And there's a ward for the right there. Right there. Yeah. Yep. It was hiding behind the other ward. Sneaky. It looked like that but ward it's already was, invisible. It looked like that ward was a turncoat. It was like I'm done with this side. Swapping to red. Can't believe the ward would do that. Betraying ward. And look at Satane. Speaking of betraying wards, stabs it right in the back. But look at that. We see Avenue is making his way down. He's looking for a flank there, but nope. Sniffs it out. All right, looks like everyone's going to be safe for this one. No gank happens for Pantheon. Wasted about 30 seconds down there, but was yep. standing on a ward. Satan, again, counter jungling this whole time. He's been doing this over and over and over again as Kha'Zix going into the enemy jungle. And even though the CS lead doesn't even look that big between the junglers, Satan's CS is on bigger camps than Spellfang. So the gold difference is actually pretty massive. Yeah. Also, the fact that he was able to get that deep ward down right now, mm -hmm. the blue buff will be up in time for that. It's around the 12-minute mark currently. Yeah. So he's going to go ahead and wait for his timer to hand off the blue buff to Orianna, and then they'll make their way over there. Because judging by the timer when he last checked the enemy red, and they weren't there, he knows that the red was done first, then the blue. And now look at this. Repeat gank bottom onto Vanez. Gonna try again. Vanez once again on the uh, wrong side for this Pantheon. Uh, Siobhan ulti doesn't do much for this one. Vanez goes back in for the battle. Deals a bit of damage. He goes into the minion, though. Trying to dash away. If he has the reason, he can jump to so one Kuka more. still has flash. Yeah, I don't think Vanus can get away from this one. The Q is not going to come up in time. Stun comes back through, but oh. E comes out. There's the kill pickup. Nice attempt to uh, disengage, but didn't have the key reset. Spellfang was running at that. Like, let me, let me just get a little help in there. A little assist. But yeah. no. Well, at least it made uh, Aurelia run the correct direction yes. to get the kill away. So uh, an assist in spirit, if not in number. What is on taking again? Damage. Saves. Oh, could he go in there? Lands the E. Nice Ooh. knock up there from Rack, so keeps himself safe. Shavana ulti comes down, traps as well. Big burst comes through, still does not go down. Jinx Rocket stymied there by the summoner heal. Now Saze taking damage the on the way out. Give me health trade. Raxo, the number one Nordic East solo queue player on the number one Nordic East challenger team. Showing the Lulu mechanics. Yeah, that was awesome. And now it looks like they're making a move here from SMW for the dragon. They'll be three man strong there. Soraka just back. She'll only be a wish at this point. All right, well, maybe it's going to be enough for this one. Cortison is going to stop the recall in time. Saves Force run away, but there we go. Spellfang looking to try to help his team stop the dragon. It's a two versus two. Looks they're just going to back off away from this one. They know they didn't have really any backup. It's going to be Dragon going over to SMW. One kill has gone back to no mercy since the start of this game. But the gold lead, now 2,400, is growing for the EUS team. And so the level one was really, really effective for SMW with the two kills and no exchange. But at this point, it's getting to that point where the dragon is the main chunk of gold. Nobody ran away with the game that early on, and No Mercy stayed in it. And they made some of the right moves to keep themselves at that point without letting the gold lead grow out of control. They gave up a dragon just now because of pink ward coverage, and now Vanna's going back and he still does not have flash. 
I'll put some damage down on this one. There we go. Again, Panther just keeps showing up. This poor Aurelia dashed to a minion. Dragonform comes in wrong side of the fight again, but I don't know if Aurelia has really anywhere to go. Once again, drop down Sakutka 2-1-0 now. This lane's been salvaged by Spellfan. And both of these both these players would know how great Shivana is. They play her a lot. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he, she has a Pantheon constantly ganking for her, there's no dragon they can take, but now they can take a turret. That's pretty big. They're going to lose their blue buff for it, though. Good timing there by Satan. Knows about this. Uh, I mean, there's a chance this gets stolen if there's no good smite. Oh, he oh, got it! Oh, he silenced! Doesn't, I Doesn't mean, matter, but he still burst it down. That's hilarious. Oh! Satan had to wait on the jump cooldown. Finally gets away. That was... That's just greedy. He could have smited. Well played there. Well by, played indeed. By Meister. Seriously, that's going to bring it back between a 1.5k gold difference from the 2k with the kill and the fact that they aren't letting buffs, which are worth a big chunk of gold, especially with the conservation. Yeah, it's which Spellfang hasn't picked up yet. So, Satane's been making the bank have that. that. Wow. Well, Panther's going to have it when he backs finally, but yeah, he's a little bit uh, poorer than you would expect on this one. See, Rax will look for some poke, puts the Q down on his Saze. Once again, these AD carries are kind of trading farm. Honestly, like, as Eventful's lane has been, nothing's ultimately happened here, and these guys have been just trading gold back and forth, which to me gives an edge to Jinx, who's picked more for her late game and her team fighting than Lucian, who's there for the laning phase, so... This is uh, something that I gotta say is a slight advantage to SMW as well. Yeah, SMW has that scaling here from Aurelia, Jinx, Orianna is always going to be a late game beast. We're gonna have to watch the build here from Meister, whether he goes with the tank Soraka, which some people have been favoring. It's or normal build. AP. Yeah, it really is. When people are like, well, I'm gonna get a Rylai's Crystal Scepter, slow everybody. Yeah. Constantly just be really hard to take out. Get something. Sometimes people go frozen heart for the cooldown reduction. Seen that? It's just like I'll get some armor on top of my armor. Yeah. Why not? I like armor. Yep. It gets a little out of hand. No, it actually gets a lot out of hand at that point. Yeah. I mean, with with a name like Armor, it's got to get out of hand. Ah. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good. You know, I do appreciate them. I appreciate the thought behind them. Thank you. And but I do think I sometimes. Probably had this gank too. Vanez now has flash. This dragon form. Vanez is trying to set up a dash. Does get to one minion right here. He's gonna try to pull the team away and dash back if he can. Oh, it just keeps running. Looks like he made his way out. The oh. movement speed is enough. Satane, he does have nice him off on the side. People who can use blade surge very effectively yeah. are always very impressive. It, it looks good. It does. Yes, Yasuo, he doesn't have to kill anything. Ooh, armor comes in though before the ignite. Mine's taking some pretty big damage. Can Avenue chase this one down? Goes for the tower dive. Forces the summoner heal out, gets away. Still has the wish, too. Meister. Yeah. Keep keeping that in his back pocket. He's like, I'm out of range, it's fine. Uh oh, Vanus oh. coming in for the tower dive, though. Only wish is available. The heal's already been burned. Vanus gets to slow down. Tree damage comes there in. His wish, and it forces Vanus away. The teleport comes in as well. Avenue forced to flash over the, the wall. The chase still coming through. Now, can Sukutka get anything for this one? Raxo nearby as well. Can he whimsy someone? Flash comes in. Damage goes through. And now, poor Avenue's kind of on the wrong side of the street with this one. Q comes out, flash silence, everything comes through. Down goes another one, 4-2 out of no mercy. Couple flashes blown there, Meisters as well as Cortesian. Cortesi. Cortesan. Cortesan, that's right. Cor He's not the coordinate system. Cortesan. Oh, we're going to have a battle go though under the turret. The knockout comes in from Lulu. The dive, the heavy armor Shivana just goes for it. Satan now under the turret goes for a bit of damage. The turret's so low, they're not hitting it. Finally it goes down. Satan's going to fall. Another kill comes through for the team. Little Lance lands, teleport comes back in from Vanas. It's going to be the disengage. No mercy. Five kills in a row. And for the first time in the game, they have a 100 gold lead. Yeah. They are actually back in the lead. And now they're on their back foot. They have low mana pools currently. The Soraka, she can sustain them. The question is who's going to back? They don't have Satane here for SMW, so they can still hold their own here for no mercy with equal numbers. Uh, they're a bit afraid, though. They know the health bars and mana bars are low. Raxo's got nothing. Meister is at half. And you're going to see this siege look likely will work there for Chantal Machtwao. You're going to go back in there, a bit of a dash in. Panther holds up in a few seconds. Sakutka in the front line. Flash, can he land the stun? Saze gets caught up with this one. Big damage comes through. Another kill. 6-2 for No Mercy. And if Avenue went straight to the bottom lane to clear it, instead of coming straight to the middle. The blue buff is up, so they'll probably hand that off to him. The 30 seconds on the dragon. So now, this is the perfect timing here for No Mercy, actually. They get to back, and they get to go straight to the dragon if they want to. Spellfang does have his ultimate available, and we're going to have to see what they do with this. They now have an advantage, and they immediately convert 
all of that gold they acquired into items. That's going to be all kinds of wonderful for these guys. You're going to see uh, Zeal and most of a Last Whisper now done for Cortezon. He's all kinds of scary, this one. And so here's the thing, too, is Vanez has his Trinity Force. Yeah. I know you love that item. But yeah, of course. At this point, this is where Aurelia actually starts becoming Aurelia. Yeah. The first couple parts of the game where she has the Sheen, the Phage, she's not that effective, especially against somebody like Shivana, who can just bully her. And now look at that. The perfect timing on it here for No Mercy. They show up and they push Satan to half HP. He's going to have to risk his life for this if he wants to go for it. But up top, yeah, see that Chantal. Yeah. He's going to try to split push this. He's doing what he can. He, it, it, and the thing is, this team had timed Dragon. They knew it was there, and they knew that No Mercy was stronger. It's a really good choice. Be like, hey, split push top, get a turret for the Dragon, because you know they're going to go for five. So that was actually a pretty good adaptation right there. A nice little thought. Take it one step ahead. Blue buff, again, available there on this side. But you're going to see him. He's not even going to try right there, because he doesn't <laughs> want to get the, the chance for it being stolen. He'll wait till he's got his team around. Yeah. Also, at the same time, last time he warded, it worked out pretty well for him. Yeah, he ended up getting up. the Cossack. See if it happens again. Just try to bait him into it. Be like, nope. So SMW have had a false sense of security multiple times here. Yeah. That last, like Meister coming up big with that bait with the wish. He held onto that spell, didn't use it when he was poked out by Avenue, and instead waited, used it at a very key moment, and baited two people under turret. Avenue went yeah. so far to the point where he had to go the long way around. What's weird about that, though, is, like, Avenue should have been able to easily tell him, like, okay, yeah, he burned the regular heal, and he burned, like, only one other heal. Like, you know Strzok has got three, right? And the fact that, like, they dove knowing another one of those heals was still available, to me, was, like, kind of weird. But at the same time, you're sitting there like, I don't, I don't know if he has it. I don't know if I have been keeping track of it. And here comes Spellfang, and here's another global for him. Right on top of Avenue, gets locked up right there in front of the wall. Big Burst comes through, nice Shockwave lands on two, but it's not enough. One kill again, picked up for No Mercy. So here's the thing, is Avenue, 244 farm, 22 minutes into the game. He's still doing amazing in the farming department. Doing better than even in the round of 20 game. Yeah. But he's giving up kills at this point. He's being too aggressive. And Chantal, he gets a turret bottom, but they lose a turret mid. A tier 2 turret, that. Yeah. Again, a better trade for no mercy. I think Chantal is doing the best he can with the situation, but it's just slipping away from these guys. 3, 1, and 4 on the Shivana had a losing lane, got salvaged by Spellfang, and then the team grouped up for team fights, and it's worked every single time. And this is the Nordic East pride coming out here for No Mercy. They have to show off, and they're wow. going to have to maintain. He got caught out with their Meister on the dash 4. Gets a little bit of a slowdown on the Kha'Zix, but will not catch him entirely. There's a Q that lands onto Saiz, though. Big Burst comes through. Raxo a bit hurt. It's not going to be enough to stop this team from going in. Again, Satan low, low, low on health. Almost the damage comes through for Lucian. Not quite enough, though. But again, forcing the team back. Dashboard, if he lands a Q, it's going to be the kill. Didn't use heal for the extra movement speed. He's like, no, no, I'm not going to be that greedy. Yeah, good not really worth there. it. Yeah, it's definitely not worth it at that point. Because you could mess that up on many levels. Yeah. I've done that. Yeah. You've healed for the movement speed. I've healed for the like, kill oh. and just like, died by being <laughs> stupid. So don't do not do what I did. Don't burn healed and die. That's really stupid. Uh, Cortison, they're going to hold the bottom lane for this one. You're going to see, despite the fact that Jinx has been split pushing so much, this Lucian is actually keeping up the minions quite well, um, which is pretty impressive when someone's given us a, a, a isolated lane for so long and to keep your minions there. So yeah, Jinx was given a lot of the CS by the Targon's race, though. Sure. In the laning phase. But in general, I mean, it's the same numbers. Yeah. And that that was a, a thing that we added a while ago. Yeah. So Glad we did have, that. You don't have to add it by hand. <laughs> And you assume like which ones were actually traded versus not. Yeah. Like cover the tooltip, do the gold map. Yeah. Like how many were five, how many were ten? No, he actually has two twenty counting whatever he got from Targon. Yep. So lovely. Uh oh, well. Oh, bit of oh a play there's on the two top there. Flame though, Sakutka's gonna get a counter kick here by Pantheon. Will it be enough? Dives in, puts some damage down. Van is forced to run away. Spellfang goes for the stun, but Satan's a tanky man. You don't necessarily want to go for that one. Damage now comes through onto Pantheon. It's kind of split back and forth. The wish comes through though. And keeps the team nice and safe. Now Van is forced to run backwards. No mercy, repeatedly winning fights. Whoa. Yep. Nice shot. Yeah, it hit them both. Gives them some more potential here to re-engage if they wanted to. But here comes Leona off on the side, but there is Soraka on yeah. the flank. They're outnumbered here. It's 4v3. 4v2 in the top lane, having Aurelia back. Vanez does have TP, though. And it's going to be the numbers advantage right now. You still have to wait for Aurelia, Jinx, and Ori to show up. So outer turret goes down. No mercy. Now four turrets to three. It is impressive that uh, Chantel has managed to pick up three turrets for themselves, uh, despite the fact that they, they had zero when they first started losing all the team fights, and managed to take all three 
uh, outers in pretty short order despite losing battles. Is Vanna's going for a wit's end? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, the that's build path, end. I'm pretty sure. He wants the match resistance. Isn't it one? No, isn't it one dagger and one recurve bow? That could oh, be. Yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah, a. That could be Blade of the Rune King. Ru yeah, Rune King, King plus a uh, Null Magic Mantle. Just because he wants it. Yeah. Like, that's I, my guess. I, I was like, yeah, Blade of the Rune King is usually what you want to go for. But I mean, if he's really fearing the magic resistance here, that's going to be shredded away by Soraka and then just had more damage dealt to him. Because mm -hmm. Shivana does a lot of magic damage that people oh, yeah. expect. Soraka's, Soraka and Lulu are going to do consistent damage over the course of time. And especially if, as a rally, you're trying to split push, which to me is what uh, SMW needs right now. You've got to itemize against your split push opponents. Yeah. And we're going to have to see, but I like the pickup of the no magic damage. He's thinking about maybe, maybe putting him into Merc Treads, but he already got the passive. He's already got enough tenacity for himself. Yeah, there's nothing to really tenacity here. Nothing nothing that's great. Like, the silence is whatever. Pantheon stun is only, like, the one real hard to see you have to care about that much, so... I, I don't think it's enough to warrant Merc Treads. So, SMW here. Clearing out the Baron Pit. It's up in 30 seconds. Now, Satan forced away, though. Damage comes through. You don't want to be half HP when the dragon no. comes up. He's going to go ahead and get himself a camp. And they ping it. They're like, he's going to try to regen off the camp. We It'll know where him. he is. So here's the thing is, Avenue is the saving grace of this alongside Chantal for yep. SMW. Because he has 286 farm at the 26 minute mark, he's doing really well for himself in the gold department. He's one of the reasons they're sticking in this game, despite being down in kills and objectives. Well, we're going to see the dragon getting started right now, though. Both teams are ready. Five on five. Spell thing, Sakutka staying up as the front line. This is going to be where the again. game gets burst wide open, and there we go. Go for the engage. Stun goes in the back line. Raxo not able to engage. Satan in the back line as well. Raxo, big damage goes onto him. The heals come through. Pantheon falls down first. Vaughn is forced over the wall. He gets away from this one. And the re-engage now. Satan looking for more. The wish comes through, but Kha'Zix will fall. One for one. No mercy. The heals keep coming through, keeping them safe. Saze drops as well. Two for one in the battle. Sakuka still chasing down. Can he reach Chantal? He's going to try for it. Flash Q gets an avenue. Now in the wrong spot as well. Not going to flash wall or anything. Just going to take damage down. Four kills to one for No Mercy. I thought you were going to make it down the wrong avenue joke there. I already made one earlier. Really? Yeah. Oh. I said on the wrong side of the road. Oh. Okay. See, those are the Good ones enough. that are beautiful because they don't always click in your head. And you're just like, oh, was that one? Was that not one? Did it just close this week? But yeah, they're going to get themselves a dragon here. And four kills off of it. Just exchanging Spell Fang for it, who jumped into the back line and was destroyed by Chantal and Avenue, but at the same time, they used so much on him here. Look at that, the shockwave, the pivotal thing they needed in this fight that fed Orianna. Blowing that shockwave is something you need in this big club here to yeah. do that damage, to get them lower, to peel them off. And now we just see the tank line is going crazy. The fact that they have all this extra armor and HP from Meister supporting them is more than enough. And Sakutka, the top laner who went 3-0-6 on Shivana in their round of 20 game, is now showing up big this game. 5-1-6 with a better KD than he had, even that which was still impressive. Yeah, absolutely great play with these guys. And it's actually worth pointing out um, with the Orianna thing, the Shockwave got flashed anyway. Yes. The Shockwave actually didn't do anything in the 1v1, or yeah. the 2v1, I suppose. Also, we got it wrong, it's Zephyr. It is Zephyr. Wow, okay. I think it's a build from a pickaxe, not a longsword, if I remember correctly. So it's not like, yeah. it's just like building parts of things. It's really weird. But Satan stays taking some damage right there, right on this one. Raxo forced back, gets the heal. Re engage, gonna come through. Nice stun again. Lands on a Lulu. Right gets the giant on. knockup. Two man shockwave. Shantau not in a good spot. Pantheon really put the pain down. Tanks the rocket. Two for one battle so far. Avenue forced to run away as well. The front line chasing him down. It's gonna be a pretty easy battle for No Mercy. Three to one in this fight. Every single battle going this way. And Shantau was in the wrong position there. Coming around, it was a good flank, except it was Pantheon already channeling that spell thing immediately on top of him. Now they blew this game wide open from giving up those two kills at the start of the game. SMW's only gotten two since then, and now there's a 6k gold lead for No Mercy, and they're going to get an inhibitor turret and an inhibitor off of this. Wow, so there goes the inhib. Great stuff with these guys. No Mercy's going to make their way back out. 15 seconds of the Oriano respawn, so... It's going to be pretty much a 4v5. These teams are going to recall back their health back up in this one. But yeah, 6,000 gold lead. Hex Drinker, by the way, the yeah. item now. Vanus is adding a bunch of random things together to try to keep himself alive. Well, when you're 0, 3, and 2 is Aurelia, who requires a lot of gold and a decent laning phase to be effective, now he's at the team fight part of the game, that mid-game, that mid game yeah. And he hasn't 
ramped up. He's been shut down by a 6-1-6. Look at all those Randuin's omens to even counter Vanez with yeah. attack speed. Would you say he's irrelevant? I would absolutely say he's irrelevant. Good. If I were you. If you not. were me. So but he's you're just not. being Irelia and he's irrelevant. Okay. Well, Spellfang gonna keep the mid lane push going in with the inhibitor down. It should create a bunch of map pressure for these guys. Uh, the Lucian, actually, Cortazon doesn't really keep pushing the bottom lane there. He ulted one wave. He grabs the red buff. He's making his way back up to the top of the map. So he could be getting a farm safely, but he'd prefer to join the team fairly soon. He's still grabbing wraiths, so he'll take some time with this one. But at some point, I'll join the team. Yeah, Giant's belt there for Vanez. He wants to be a little more durable. He's just getting himself into these fights with cost-effective items and not going for something like a Blade of the Ruin King because it's so far removed from what he started to build in the first place. Yeah. You kind of have to commit to what you picked up to deal with them. You know, just the tiny threats in lane. Mm -hmm. That added up to just an immense amount of you being shut down. Yeah, it's going to take quite a bit for these guys to catch back up now. Uh, no Mercy played the beginning of the game with a 2,000 gold deficit and caught back up, but now Shantao down 5,000 gold as a team. They've been losing battle after battle right here. I think it's kind of funny because the, the red team lineup was full of hard engage and diving and like, oh yeah, we're just going to support you with the Orianna and whatnot. But it's actually No Mercy that they've been able to actually have been able to dive in the battles and use the Orianna and Lulu, or sorry, the Sorok and Lulu to keep those tanks alive and diving. Yeah, and it's the scaling team too. We talked about how well Jinx, Orianna, Aurelia do in the late game, but the fact that No Mercy kept in it and now they blew themselves up with this team fight composition, that's really what did it for them. The Shivana with the Sona, or the Soraka who's super tanky, and also just throws down so much damage at the same time. And Cortison, he did really, really well for himself in the top lane. We saw him just winning first, and he started losing it. But then, oh my lord, he just came out big. And now, we're gonna get another turret. They go ahead and the super are doing the work in the mid lane. They're just picking him apart at this point, getting even more in terms of advantage. And SMW, they have to farm up if they want to do anything in this game. A team fight is most likely not going to go their way unless they get a five-man shockwave. Yeah. Create shockwave, maybe a turret, maybe a baron hitting the enemy team, something to tip that fight in their favor. Certainly they have not found that just yet in this game. Or the game. Winions in the bottom lane. Yeah, big wave actually did push the bottom. I mean, Corda, uh, yeah, Cortison didn't finish pushing the wave out, so it stacked up. The gold didn't go anywhere. No Mercy actually going to sit there to bait Baron, not start it. It's the right it's the right play, because if you start the Baron, you risk it being stolen, which risks the comeback, whereas why not just go for the cutthroat here? And there it goes. Um, Jinx will see flies by. Doesn't see that they've actually been doing Baron. Vana's though going to get slowed up a little bit. Satan also on the wrong side of the map. Of course, the leap away. Starcall has now been outranged. They did force the team away, and Papa Jinx will out of this one. Looks like No Mercy going to be back to trying to control the map now. But mid inhibitor will be respawning before too long. Satane is off on the side. Dragon's up in 30 seconds here. And there's the jump. This is a hard engage. All right, Fianta going for the engage. Not quite going to find it. Flash stuns into Shantao, though. Takes the uh, solar flare. Takes a two-man shockwave as well. Big damage. Wish forced right now. Many ults now down on both sides. What's going to happen with this battle? Sakutka still in the back line, pulling a bunch of attention. Vanna is off on the side, though. Puts some damage through. Looks like it's going to be disengaged on both sides. Satane took it away. Now the dragon is coming up in five seconds here. And No Mercy is directly in position for it. Yep, they've got they're the team with the extra gold lead. Get this one right on the spawn. 33 and a half minutes in. They're already there for it. Yeah, they're not even range this fight. He knows he's not really going to risk this one. Three calls back. These guys know they've got control. SMW, though, they're pinging out. Interesting. Oh, wow, they had so little ward control. They thought Baron might have been the play. They didn't even think about dragon. They're like, wait, 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 wait. We, we didn't see them. Is it is it Baron? Yeah. Not even. They had to check it at that point, because it sure. was possible that it could have been a Baron play. And you always want to be on top of that, especially when you're behind. You don't want to have to face check anything in that area. So they established war control for themselves to prevent just that. But the item differential here between the two teams is just immense. That top lane that was being camped so hard by Spellfang in the early game mm -hmm. to shut down the Aurelia and keep him shut down worked effectively. He's 0, 3, and 2 on Vanna's Aurelia, one of his favorite champions, and his item build has just been knocked off the path of effectiveness at this point. The Blade of the Rune King completed for Sakutka, so his damage is really high up there. He has both resistances stacked alongside a lot of HP, so he is ready to go. He's ready to start carrying this game. And really, at this point, the one person, the two people who could save this game are pretty much Avenue and Chantal for SMW if they wanted to, or if they were able to come back. 
But there's so much armor stacked and so much attack speed slow Yeah. that Chantal, if he attacks anybody, being an immobile AD carry, he's going to get slowed on top of the Randuin. It's very hard and difficult for a Jinx to operate in this type of situation. Absolutely agree. And to think about it, Spellfang's adding a locket of Iron Solari to his team. Yeah. You've already got Wish. You've already got Lulu giving someone shield and a big boost of health. Everything else, the engage is going to come through. Chantal in exactly Chantel. the wrong spot. Great shockwave, but he gets blown up anyway. One for zero, no mercy, still trying to live up to their name and push this game through. 35 minutes in, mid inhibitor, attempt number two coming through that's going to be falling as well. 5v4, these guys are controlling the game. The challengers from the Nordic East showing that they are up to the task. They're going after Avenue and the throw. Now Avenue forced back with this one. Spell thing low, they're going to take turret shots. He will go down one for one now overall. Look at this push, might not work anymore. Sakuka now stunned in turret range as well. Maybe these guys bit off more than they can shoot. Big damage comes through. The heals coming in. Ignite not going to get the pick up anyway. Now Raxo very low. Another kill. Vanis picks up two. Now Cortison to the wrong spot. Gets exploded on this one. Triple kill for Vanis. It's now a 4v1 on the map. And that is a barren ping here. They're going straight for it by SMW. The overextension, and they went for the throat, but they ended up cutting their own hands. Yeah, that throat was pretty sharp in this one now. It's going to be a 4,000 gold difference, but it's going to shut to about 2,000 when Baron goes down. As he's taking the damage, only Soraka is there to defend. More than eight seconds to go until anyone else respawns in this one. Big damage, honestly, coming down to the Baron. But look at this, the MVP of this is really the turrets. How much damage they continue to do. We see Sakuchka, he takes aggro here, it drops off, it goes to Lulu for a bit, then it jumps back to him. And Sakuchka's so tanky that you really did need the turrets to take him down. The sixth member, the seventh member, that was really an eight man team there. Yep. For SMW. And we said they needed help to win the team fights. The turrets were, in fact, part of that. And there we go, it's going to turn the game into a much more decent spot right there. You can see 55 to 58,000. Just a Zephyr done as well. Just doubled their kills. In the yeah. entire game went from four to eight. They're three k gold behind, or about two point three k gold behind. And now yeah. they have temporary combat stats. Yeah, it actually puts them as the stronger team on the map right now. Yep, Baron's worth about six k ish. And here's the thing: is what they'll do with this is they will farm up the lanes, cause that threat. They have the super minions, so that wave will continue to push into their mid lane, and they're gonna farm up. So they're gonna get all this gold and turn those temporary combat stats into permanent. They're really going to win this one, but no mercy. Looks like they still want to exert pressure there. They've got that dead middle inhibitor. They know they can pull attention there. Try to get some turrets back. This is risky, though. If they get into the wrong kind of fight, the gold lead's gone. And you can see Chantal, he went for the distortion on his boots. He needs the flash cooldown because we just see Spellfang on him all the time with the Grand Skyfall. And in that vein, when we're talking about boot enchants, you can see... We have Alacrity on Vanez because he wants to be in that fight. He wants to move around as much as he possibly can. He has the Zephyr movement speed. He has the Trinity Force movement speed. He has the Alacrity movement speed. He just wants to move. He He's really got shoes on. Yep. Ready to dance. He's a quick freaking moving guy. And it's 484 move speed without the uh, the killing and minion proc. So it's a rather quick bro. So here we go. Looks like defense now is the name of the game for No Mercy. Six to three again. The turret score, but this could be. A very different number soon. 2,000 gold difference. Mid lane death in the focus. More wars getting swept out. These minion waves die so quickly. But for the first time in a long time, SMW are now applying pressure to the turrets of No Mercy. The Baron's worth a lot. It's about 4,000 gold in terms of contemporary combat stats. They're only 2k behind. So they do have an advantage here, and they have sieging potential with the HP region. Look at how quickly that goes down and the siege that Jinx brings. Yeah, Cortos on forced to burn his ulti to try to clear the minion wave away, but it's not going to be enough. Interestingly enough, did not go Triforce Lucian, by the way, to go for the uh, Phantom Dancer type build. Fan is. Didn't get the reset, but it didn't nope. matter. He got away enough. Little short on that. Dragon is up in 40 seconds. Both teams are actually in a great position to contest here. I actually would love to see how long the Baron buff has remaining on Because if they're able to get to that Dragon with Baron on it, which it does look like they would be able to yeah. for 30 seconds. Minute 10 seconds roughly on the Baron buff. It's going to be enough for Dragon itself. Now the thing is, that last Dragon went down when SMW was like checking Baron. They don't have the exact timer here. If they can realize it instinctively by saying they were off the map and it wasn't Baron, they could guess the timer. But it looks like they do not know about the Dragon whatsoever. And it's going to go to No Mercy. They got enough wards that they're not going to get stabbed for it. Yeah, they're just going to go to farm in that top lane. They'll put it about a 3k gold difference here between these two teams once the dragon falls into the hands of SN. No mercy. 
And over see, you know, the fact that they came back from that early level deficit oh, man. was really impressive. Two kills falling into people's hands. They didn't blow summoner spells though at the start. They were pretty much like, okay, okay, you know what, you got, our, you got us. Yep. That's it. So they didn't give up huge advantages. They gave up some kills and experience, mm -hmm. about 1,000 gold. But when you blow summoner spells on top of it, it's even worse. But they still recovered from all of that. It's amazing. And now, in the lead, they just have to wait out this Baron buff and go back for the inhibitor. And they're still the stronger team. Well, let's see what they can find. Baron buff. Pretty much gone at this point. 15 seconds. Going to be going away. Now it's, it's, now it's back to strategic play. It's like, okay, guys. You guys threw an advantage away. Of course, uh, No Mercy did come back from a 2,000 gold deficit. But we talked about the fact that... Um, Shantao Max Wow, they've got this crazy late game. They've got the Jinx who's catching up in items. Infinity Edge is not going to be that far away anymore. Um, yeah. Has some armor to maybe live through the Pantheon and everything. We'll see. But you're getting a, a more and more and more powerful Orianna in a rally that got a giant power spike now with Randuin's done. Like, this will be a very different team now. Yeah, and there's a lot of AoE damage from these mid laners. You see the Orianna is getting there. He has the Death Cap, he has the Void Staff, he's going to shred through the resistances, he's going to be fine. There's the Engage, they're going for Shantao again, but the TP at the same spot makes him avoid it. Well, it's going to be many ultis burned there, Spellfang does stay alive there. Sakutka going to the backline by himself, looking for Shantao, forced back on this one. Great Shockwave to hit three, is that going to be enough now? No Mercy, still the one aggressive, Vat is forced away using Mikhail to keep himself alive. But the chase in, No Mercy trying to go for this one, looking for more, stays a bit low, low health bars everywhere. Nobody dies. But everyone injured. But now the inhibitor is open for No Mercy to go after. The Baron buff was what SMW needed to stay in the game. And now that deficit is making itself known again. And look at that, they're trying to go for it. Inhib falls, but Home Guards healed up most of the SMW team. Spellfang is going to go down for that one because they went so hard for that. Slow's going to get dodged away successfully. Nice Q as well, but there's a TP. Aureli will get at least something on this one. Looks in, there's the flash, gets a slow down onto Raxo. It's going to be him locked up as well. That is a kill picked up, saves, tanks away pretty much all of the culling. W could land a Sakutka, he's going to get a bit of a slow there. And now a 5v3 for 35 seconds. With the 40 second death timers, that's enough time for them to start sieging up this turret. The long range wave clear that they have compared to what No Mercy has currently available to them. It's not that great, and they can't really engage without the Pantheon. Here we go. Inhibitor mid lane under fire. There's the first inhib turret of the game for Chantal Mach. Wow, they're going to get the first turret. The inhib goes down as well. 3v5 though. No Mercy still trying to stick around, do something for this one. They've got Pantheon in five seconds with his ultimate. It's going to be the chase actually. The slows, they can get enough. They can knock this team away. Vana's going to use the Randuas to slow down Sakutka. Team running away with the uh, command dissonance as well. Looks like that will be a successful disengage. The fact that there's 30 seconds on Baron right now, they have to back now to set up for it. There's a bottom wave that needs clearing by No Mercy in order to contest it. So he's going to clear that as fast as he possibly can because he knows where he needs to be. He needs to be present in that Baron fight. He's going to clear this out and start running over there, possibly pick up the red buff on his way if he has the time. Do they just not know the exact timer? Because going for golems right there I think is not the right choice. You've got to get yourself the red buff and get to your team in case the other guys rush it down, looks like, though. They're going to be safe. He's going to get the red buff. Ward sweeping, actually. No Mercy right now owns the area just enough. And but they've got to be careful. Avenue's going for blue, too. The buffs before this Baron are extremely important on these champions. We see Meister, he hasn't died all game. He's 309. He has the Rylai's Leandre combo. And the fact he's tanky, he's very, very hard to take down. Nobody's done it yet in this game. Yeah, I feel like long duration fights could go pretty well for the No Mercy squad if they can get multiple heals out. Pretty good for these guys. Recall came through for Lucian. Didn't pick up anything for it, though. Still just sitting on pickaxe. Ah, it's a scrying orb. Thanks, Fanez. All right, nice. He's got one for himself. Never face check again. And we're going to have to, as long as it's off cooldown. So the problem with their last engage was that the TP came in at the same location and a little earlier than the Grand Skyfall. So basically, Shantao was like, oh, I need to move away from this ward that's being TP'd on, and that's exactly where Spellfang was. The engagement that Spellfang has had in the past, right on top of Chantal, have been perfect. You lock up that Jinx, she's extremely squishy. He has the GA completed now, so what they're going to have to do is just try to get to him, destroy him, and then camp his body. And they can do that with how tanky Sinkuchka is and Meister. So we'll see if they can get enough with this one. Here we go. Minions getting swept away rather quickly. Looks like the mid lane siege back and forth. Of course, both teams missing inhibitors mean cheaper minions everywhere. 
and it's a 1,000 gold difference right here. And nobody went straight for the Baron. It's a one minute on the Dragon remaining. Super minions are going to do battle with each other in the mid lane, and that's where everybody else is, too. Here no TPs. The, yeah, here comes the real test, though. I think very few teams are in 45-minute games that are super equal. Normally, it's a team with a lead trying to close it out, and they're going, like, oh, we're going to control Baron, we're going to do all this stuff. But now it's like, well, no one owns the map. Really. It's how do you create opportunities from nothing when you've got little you've got little vision control. Split pushing could get you caught really easily. It's like a bunch of five-man squads looking for ways to create pressure. And I gotta apologize to Vanus. He's been playing Aurelia forever. Yep. You know, but his build it worked out. It's working out now. Yeah. Blade of the Rune King is the standard that we see a lot of people go nowadays. But I mean, if yeah. you make it work, then you make it work. I see occasional Zephyrs. I wouldn't call it yeah. standard, but uh, it's not the first Zephyr rally I've seen. Yeah. People usually will get rid of Zephyrs for their boots, or get rid of boots for Zephyr, and sit on like a Blade of the Rune King nope. instead. But he wants just wants all. all the movement speed. That's his counter engage. That's how he follows Shivana into that you. line. Yeah. It's like Shivana is on us, I'm on her. Like, even yep. with burnout, I'm just as fast. Oh, absolutely. As soon as you take damage, you can stun him, too. Yep. And look at that. Dragging up, Baron up. But the inhibitor is now in favor of SMW. Chantal back to wow. All right. They've got about a, it's about a one minute window. I think there's no super minions left. Yeah. So it's going to be back to equal. It's got about equal. one more. I think there's one more coming down. Okay. Strut this stuff. No, there's none left. Yeah. There's none on the map when the inhib respawns, and the inhib's respawning like right now. So that was the last super minion wave. So back to regular footing here in this one. No mercy. On top of a ward right here. Sweeper is up for Rack, so he doesn't realize it. Lucian right now. You can see Cortison is actually being donated a lot of farm. They want him to hit that infinity edge power spike. He's not reached it yet, so he's the guy getting the farm. He's going to race. He's going to wolves. He's getting stealth things out of position. They know it. They're going straight for him. He's going to try Skyfall to get out. He gets out. Whee! Nice. He's gone. All right. Well, he's got a minute and a half though. Now he doesn't have that engage tool. Are they going to start the Baron up? It looks like they. No, they're just going to camp it. All right. No, oh, he's trying to. They poked this. it. Ooh, they took aggro. Had to get away from that angry. one. Six bit of damage. Culling's not gonna hit very much. Maybe it's about ten bullets there. Vaughn is though goes for the engage, does not land solar flare though. And here comes Akuka into the front lines. Good traps gonna hold people back though. Jump into the back line. Look at the damage coming through for Pantheon. One man shockwave pulls back Sakuka. Big knock up there onto Meister. He wants to kill things if he can. Down into the back line goes the Leona. One kill picked up Chantel, also forced to revive. Big fight for no mercy. Vaughn is washes the wall. There's a double kill there. Sakuka big on Shivana. 5v3. They keep speeding up Meister with Raxo, so it's this incredibly fast Soraka, slowing everybody down, yeah. shredding them, doing so much damage, and being unkillable. It is ridiculous to watch right now, and it's incredibly ridiculous and hard to deal with. But they don't even go for Baron, they go for the middle inhibitor. There's 50 seconds on Chantal. They could end the game here, unless a perfect engage happens. They could try. They're fighting as an Orianna, which is always going to be difficult. It looks like Satan goes in for a bit of a trade right there. Has the ulti pop. Summoner heal burned right there from No Mercy. But they're going to go in big damage on the Avenue. Culling not going to hit him, though. Re-engage into Satan. Some good stun damage comes through. Which is the minion clearing. There's a new wave, but it's not going to be much. No Mercy still has about 10 seconds pre-Leona. Will it be Baron? It's a good pushback there using Satan. But the Solar Flare in the last fight whiffing and the Shockwave hitting one person yeah. was the exact opposite of what they needed. They needed those boosts to get both of the people. Baron, the DPS on it is already at half. As soon as they get a ward over the wall, it may be just in time. Ooh, will he try? And he's going, going to! But he gets, he gets the smite, but he's got to flash the wall. The ulti comes in, low health bars. No mercy, just lost the Baron. Good disengage there from Lulu. This team will get away, but wow. Inhib, but Baron goes to Chantal Macht. Wow. Got a four-man shockwave off of that. Looked really impressive. They weren't going to go completely for it. The soft disengage there from Raxo was more than enough with the Lulu. And now they're going to pick up the Baron for themselves. The Dragon's going to fall into their hands. Oh SMW, God. they're back in the game again with No Mercy was knocking at their door. That's incredible. I can't believe the game has gone like this. 49 minutes and 24 seconds in. The game started with Chantal Machtwau getting a 2 for 0 at level 1 during an invade. They got ahead in the laning phase, 2,500 gold. Then No Mercy found team fight after team fight after team fight, going 16-4 or something like that at some point. 
Jeez. And then two Barons later. It's almost dead even right now Yeah. in gold. Temporary combat stats in favor of SMW. Gives him that edge. But the hero right there, Satane, coming up big for the EU West team. <laughs> Off she goes. Well, not quite I edge still for Jinx. He's got some time to go to the full build. However, Lucian has reached this. Even this white Baron buff, if I were the Lucian, I'd be like, guys, I do like 50% more damage than Jinx right now. We should go for a fight anyway. And if they can peel properly, Lucian can carry these battles. Also, Meister, he still hasn't died. He's always just running in there, throwing down his Star Call, and now they're going to camp a bush. And this is actually a route that... Uh, you would check pretty frequently at this point in the game. See, scrawling orbs down. Fauna's can't necessarily tell. If they go for it. They don't know that the rest of the team's behind it. There. Now they do. Oh, uh, jigs up. Better run. To go. Mid lane got pushed out. Better run straight over a ward. And they walk over a ward. Satan's going to make his way over. Nothing too big picked up, though, but it does mean the inside track there in the mid lane. SMW could rush down this inhibitor pretty safely. By the time they get to the inhibitor, Spellfang's going to be back in the base and ready to use his Grand Skyfall. And there he goes. He goes straight for it. All right, a couple of Banshee's Bills pop by the Culligan. There comes the battle. Quick early zone is used. And a one-man shock of the knockup there from Lulu. The battle is afoot. Chantal forced back by Sakutka. Spellfang goes down one for zero. The kill back on a Jinx, though. The AD carry. Now, Cortison is there available in the back line. He's going to push everyone away with this one. Satan forced out Avenue as well. Big damage coming through, and that's another kill picked up. Two for one to no mercy. The lack of peel that they have for Jinx to get Sakutka off of Chantal is just destroying them in these fights. Vanus, he's going for another hero move here. Uh, he has to get this. Yeah, I mean, he's but got Hunter Teleport. This is going to easily drop. I'm actually surprised that no mercy's pulling back because he can't get anything else. TP to the top turret, and he's out of there. He's going back, too. He's going to cash in. Yeah, no mercy yeah. could have stayed mid. The mid and hib's respawning right now, and they could have stayed in the 4v3 and taken mid and hib. So he just sold his Hex Drinker. He's buying a GA. Yeah. Most likely. No, Thornmail. Wow. You know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with... Yep. You know, I'm done with everything. Yeah. Once we hit Banshees, I was like, okay, well, you know, there's a chance he just wants more armor. Yeah. There's no heavy mage damage. Like, there is magic damage. You've got Sunfire, Thornmail, uh, Shivana being Shivana. You've got... Yusaka does some. Shivaka. But you get, once you get, like, a modicum of MR, it's just more about Lucian at that point. AD carries still are the biggest late game damage source. Yeah. And so Thornmail, like, I think exists on almost every tank build. So you're going to go ahead and try to counter the Lucian out. Yeah. Sun has been having a really good game six, one, and five. But Sakutka at the same time, 9, 2, and 8. He's coming up big for his team. He's only not been involved in two kills as the top laner. Yeah. Whereas Soraka, who has complete global presence with the Wish, has only not been involved in three. Yep. Sakutka, a lot of the fights have been on him in the early game. Yeah. He's, he's securing the kills. Exactly. And in the late game, he's like, all right, I'm going to go straight in there, use my burnout, get on to Chantau. He's got the dive buddy of Spellfang always backing him up. Spellfang's been the one who's dying every time, though. He's like, I'm going to get the engage. I'm going to risk my life and sacrifice myself for it. But they come up big in the fight. I remember when they were going four for one, it was Spellfang who was ending up dying. And look at this. Here he goes once again. One more engage. They're going to look for it. Big knock up there onto three from Lulu. The battle is afoot. Giant shockwave, though. Satan off on the side, but Cortison forced him away rather easily. Spellfang takes big damage. He's going to be falling down. He does, in fact. And now, that is back in the mix. Forced away, though. Big damage comes through from Meister. Looks like that's going to be a one-for-one one so far. But low health for Sakuka takes a bunch of pain. Forced to walk away. Such little health on Chantal Machtwao. But not enough. Braxo can't chase him out. It's so hard to deal with the Shivana, But look at that. The super minions are knocking on those Nexus turrets. But there's Ooh. the kill. They actually re-engaged a little weird right there. Cortison picks up the kill on that one. So two-for-one overall, but... A lot of pressure on the base. I wonder if Zonius was still up at the time by about a second or two. Either way, at that point, if you're caught by Native Carry, you're not going to get away from your Zonius. Yeah. Just for fun, though. You got to do it. Yes, he tamed immediately out of that fight. But the Shockwave came up bigger. That's exactly what they needed. And that's what allows them to come up even in this case. Cortison, his attention is off on Satane for so long, and they don't even pick him up. He goes into the base. They left Lulu to deal with him, so she's not even involved in this fight. And the kite backwards. We're going to see what ends up happening here. They go 
really far forward. Cortisone is off in the side push. He goes to check it with the ball. And he got and silenced as well. Immediately can't do anything about it. Yeah, might just silence. There was actually no chance to Zonia's anyway. But yeah, all they were trying to do was stop recalls. They thought people were going back to defend the minion waves that Kha'Zix had pushed. I see Chantau still with that GA on himself. Yeah. We're still in the past in this one too. Yeah. It's a great all right, we're good with this one. So, Meister, keeping himself in a good spot with this one. Going to kill off. Yeah, recall off the huh. ward. He's going to be okay. Now we can okay. see there. Okay. We're going to go back and focus up with this one. So, the yep. mid lane push did get stopped. Mid and him going to be respawning soon. Baron's up in a minute. Dragon's up in 40 seconds. It's risky to even go for Dragon right now because Baron's up in a short enough amount of time. You'd be out, you'd be out position for Baron. Yes. And the gold's almost not worth it anyway. You can do it. I'm just saying it's risky. Yeah, it's very risky. Now the dragon's up. They're staggered about 20 seconds. So like you said, go for dragon. Might be a little late to Baron. And look well, at that. The Alacrity Boots were sold by Vanez. Just buys Distortion now for the teleport cooldown because he wants to try and Smart. split push and draw Sakutka's attention. Let's see if he can. Once again, Meister has not died. One death for Cortezon. The people who keep dying on No Mercy are the same people. It's just constant deaths from Spellfang and really Raxo. Those are the only two who end up going down. And despite the kill difference, SMW, you know, Chantal Macwao are still up there in gold, which is extremely impressive. Their objective game, they're still behind in turrets. They have these side lane turrets to take. But just the pressure that they apply and the fact that they go even in some fights and then like maybe minus one kill in the others, they're still getting Baron steals. They're getting some dragons for themselves. This next, this next couple of minutes, these objectives, that's going to be a deciding game. Well, here we go. Can the any pride bring it out? Can the Nordic can't do it? It's an interesting little pop up right there. We're still okay in this game, of course. Yeah. No mercy. Going to look for what they can on this one. Aurelia is around in the mix, looking to take up the front line. We are, of course, live. Don't worry, guys. It's okay. We are in the game. But the Siege is the attempt right now for No Mercy. Moving forward, Open Inhibitor is there. Any fight could pretty much conclude the game. Engage from Pantheon. Fuck Splat. All right. So. <laughs> what happened? We'll Did have it in jump, a second. He jumped down. Dude, that is how cataclysmic Pantheon's ultimate is right there. He actually <laughs> destroys the games by himself. So, guys, we'll get you, get you the results. We'll get you the game in a little bit. Don't worry about that. We'll get ourselves back in this one. So the game... 55 minutes in. And by the way, just so you know, the game did play out in real time. It's like, like the game still happened. Don't yes. worry about that yeah. one. Just so you know, it's a spectator issue, not the game itself. That's still fine. So let's talk about what we have so far in this game. Ludicrously close. Yeah. Rank 1 Nordic East was ranked 2 EU West. So top competitors. Like both rosters have like four guys in Challenger. Yeah. Like ludicrously good players in the first place. Jinx, I just feel bad for. Yeah. I know we talked about it in Champ Select, right? It's like, oh, your whole team's going to go in. They're going to create the front line. You'll be fine. It's like, yeah, but it's Pantheon Shivana. Yeah, they can dive life was sad. right into the back line. And here's the thing, too, is we set up Avenue in the pregame being a really good Oriana player. We saw his farm throughout the game has been immense. Yeah. Then he started getting shut down. And Meister hasn't died at all. He's died. He, died, he went 2, 3, and 8 in the round of 20. He hasn't died a single time in a counter matchup. So Oriana is you know, regarded as one of those people or one of those champions that yeah. does really well against Soraka. Yeah. Not the story here. Bullied him around for sure, but didn't yeah. kill him. Actually, uh, Soraka did fine in CS anyway. Yeah. He ended up bullying Soraka out of lane. We saw it a couple times. The bait under the turret is yeah. what set that one around. Because Meister was able to hold on to his wish for so long and then bait the bottom lane and the mid laner into him was huge for the team. Yeah. Then they ended up getting uh, all four of them collapsed, the two kills and the turret off of it. Yeah, and I want to actually kind of focus back on some of the other early early laning phase matches as well. The one that I liked was uh, Shivana versus Aurelia. We talked about Spellfang camping for Sakutka to get that matchup good. And it was interesting because Pantheon was actually ganking, right? Yeah. Grand Skyfall on cooldown all the time trying to get Aurelia. Didn't get all of them. Okay, fine. But got some of them, right? And got lane pressure. You get flashes most of the time, too. Which is great. It's still Flash good. advantage is huge in lane. Absolutely it is. It lets you get those kills right there. But the interesting thing to me was that the Kha'Zix on the other side of the game Right, was looking to counter jungle, but I never saw him actually force ganks. Yes. You've got a Leona Jinx lane. You've got an Oriana with shock. We've got a Relia to stun, 
and never actually looked for a real gank to set this up, was tunneled on counter juggling Pantheon and got a gold lead for it. But that doesn't snowball a game for you. It just it just accrues a gold lead slowly and steadily, and it was like twenty five hundred gold, but nothing 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 turned on for these guys. Yeah. They're just like landing phase, landing phase, landing phase, landing phase. Oh shoot, they did stuff. Yeah, they had those two early kills. I think they got a little complacent with it because they sat on them for so long, and we're like, we're fine. We got a dragon. Two kills, a dragon. We're up about 2,000 gold. Let's just keep playing this out. We have the scaling team with Aurelia. We have it with Jinx. We're going to be fine. But then at the same time, it did not play out at all like that. Soraka coming up big. Siobhan is able to deal with Jinx in the back line with Pantheon diving. Just so much here, just clashing at each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why the game was even at that point. So, yeah. So, just so you guys know, we're getting souls back into the game in just a second. As, as we talked about it, the game was still playing on. We're going to get back in about 56 minutes into the game. We'll play out the rest of it for you guys and commentate that one. It actually, it's, it's still live for us. I don't actually know who won or anything. Yeah. But <laughs> if I haven't seen it, it's new to me. It's new to me. It's, Pretty all, much. it's all that matters. It's like reruns are new to you as long as, yeah. as, long as you haven't seen them yet. Um, okay, so yeah, we're now into lake of situations. Team fights are explosive. Um, I feel like there's still the edge to no mercy, even though they're like losing barons and things are screwing up for them. It's like the Shivan is not getting removed. The Jinx is dying, whereas Lucian's staying alive. And to me, when you get to the hyper leg of scenario, it still is about the marksman. And the fact that one team is actually able to keep theirs alive, unless their front line dies too fast and they just got nothing else to do, they're still going to be okay. All right. And this is before Spell Thing uses his ultimate to engage. All right, here we go. Nice loud game sounds for everyone. And here we go. There we go. Awesome. Whew. Back to a decent spot with this one. Now Spell Fang. He's going to look for it. Engage here. There it is. All right, here we go. Can they get the damage through in this one? The jump on in. Leona in the front lines. Nice knock up there from Lulu. Shockwave Ooh. lands on a two. This is a good fight right now. Chantal Machwell, well, they take down one. There we go, Satan forced away Lucian, though getting some damage through Sukutka, forced away, but here comes the damage. It is on for Lucian, and no one is reaching him. Is it going to be enough there? The fourth oh, the flash. Red. Oh, no. Jinx has He red. went in too hard, and the kills are getting picked up now. Shantan Makhwad looking for another one. Three kills picked up, and suddenly, actually, the Jinx are not getting caught. Blows up everybody. So Spellfang's ultimate. Landed right on top of some chompers to zone, but also saves went in at the same time. These are 50 second death timers. They're going for that open inhibitor here. They will have minions behind them in a bit, but they can still tank it out with how tanky Sazed is from all of this and the fact that they still have their marksman available. Oh, here we go. 40 seconds, 30 seconds. They're going to keep pushing on in. They've got two. Uh, pretty tanky guys. Actually, I guess just one, really. Aurelia is actually sitting in the back lines, but can teleport in if she needs to. They would have some kind of putty, uh, ability to put her back in. So they're trying to defend. There is a turret there. Saves actually fairly low on health, but Jinx is putting some good damage down. There's going to be turret number one picked up. There we go. The stun on a Sakutka, though. The Shivana hard to remove. Jinx kind of getting forced back as well. Meister doing what he can to keep his team alive, keep him in the game. Three seconds, two seconds of Pantheon. Here we go, the Shockwave gonna land. Will they go for the next one, or will the team come in in time? They're trying to close it out. Is the damage gonna be enough? Yes, it is. And look at that. 58 minutes in, Chantal Machtwell. They take the game in a nail-biting fashion. It was worth the wait. Yeah. It 